Today I got my son Michael in the chair and this is how you fix a bad cut, right? We're going to do a couple of temps and different things. A lot of times people go to a barbershop and they think the cut looks phenomenal. It dries, it does different things. <clears throat> it don't look as good as what you thought it was going to look, right? So we got a few minutes. We're open for business and not really business. We're just open. If anybody wants to come get a, uh, a cut today, we're right here at 106 Roberts Avenue. You can come on over and get a cut. Be glad to have your chair is open from now until whenever, right? But we're just going to work on some different things as far as his hair goes uh, here on the video just for a few minutes. Because like I said, sometimes you get uh, what you think is a good cut and then when you dry it, different things that don't. Now, on his head, he's got some dark spots. He's got some different things, a couple of different uneven points. And he's got this big crown on the back that uh, learned today on how to take care of that, right? So we're going to be working on that for a few minutes and go from there. So got our Model 10s and we got our one and a half, right? So anyway, with the one and a half, with the Model 10s, bring it flat up against the head, bring it up. And as you get to the top about where you want it, you flip it out, right? has not to get into the higher things. Now the pressure on the Model 10 will help me take out those dark spots, right? And then of course got my comb, right? It'll help me take out those dark spots. And uh, Michael's a little bit upset because I'm the one that cut his hair, right? And uh, the other day, and it did not come out the way we wanted it, because I'm still student, I'm still learning. And uh, Learning on the Model 10s, because most of the time the calibers are my go-to. But I had a very similar cut coming to school today, and my instructor was able to tell me what I was doing, and I said, that's exactly what I did to Michael's hair. So what we'll take and try to fix the cut and make it look a lot better, and if he comes around back, I'm going to actually I'll just give it the chair around. As you can see, a lot of times they got this crown right here, right? and have it in different places. Now, the crown, if it's got enough hair to push it down, backward or forward, it kind of holds down, but a lot of times it just poof, pops up, right? So in saying that, we're bringing it up higher in the back as we're getting rid of some of the dark spots and different things, like I said, laying the Model 10s. Now, the Model 10s tend to get a little bit warm as you use them. Um, I'm, I'm a 76 guy myself. Now, it's basically the same clipper, same motor, everything, just a different casing. But the model pins tend to heat up a little bit. But in saying that, right, um, I'm getting to the point where I like model pins better than I do the 76s for whatever reason, right? So we're gonna bring it up and out, and we're gonna continue to work this crown spot right here. And we'll have to do just a little bit of sheer work, not a lot, but just a little bit. So I'm bringing it up to about the round of the head and flicking it out, right? And flicking it out. And that way it's going to blend in a little bit better than what it was doing. See how much hair just came off there? It's coming up to the rim. I don't want to get into the top, up and around. And then we'll use our shears to kind of blend that in. Now, as the camera can see, you've got some dark spots, dark different lines and everything. And a lot of times people think that's where, because I was one of them as a student, thinking that that's where uh, you just got to come in and do your fade and blind work. What that is is where you're not putting enough pressure with your clippers against the head because as a new student, cause like I said, we're learning this together because I'm still, you know, in the process of learning too, right? But <clears throat> you're afraid to dig in and actually hit with this point into the scalp. So you tend to be a little bit softer, a little bit more cautious, right? But if you put the flat spot up against and with some pressure, you're still going to get that cut and that quality cut, right? And it's not going to poke right? So we're going to get this darkness work out. Now, Fun fact of the day, which I'll post another fun fact later, is a lot of people think that the mirrors in the barber shop are for the client, when really they're for us, the barber, right? That way we can see when I turn and I look for some different dark spots. Sometimes, like my instructor said, you may have to go in a different direction, right? So we're going to take that get all those dark spots that we had in his head out, right? See, boom, dark spot gone, blend it over nicely. Got another dark spot right up here. We can see it in our mirror as well. We're coming up and we're working that dark spot. Now, that put a little line up here in the top of the head, which is fine. I'll be able to blend that out, right? 
just bring it up and flick it out, bring my comb up and underneath it, and I'll be able to ride my, my blade up where it just come up and flick it out. And we'll take, um, we'll take our calibers perhaps and finish working that line the rest of the way out, right? Because definite line right there across the head now, right? So, but we want to get these dark spots. Then a lot of times you see what we call sharp hay wrinkles, what I call them, right? When really, you know, they're there to be there. So a lot of times, you're going to have to pull that over, kind of tight. And the haircut will look good. The haircut will look real, real good until they go to walk away or until a couple of days it dries, whatever. And then you got those spots. So you've got to go with the hair, bring the clippers in, be very careful around that real loose skin, right? And just get it the best you can. They know they have those lines in the hair. They've been taking care of their hair longer than we have, right? So they know where their light spots and dark spots and where their, their bumps, moles, their high points, low points are, right? So as the clippers get warm, right, take you some barberside spray. Just take the barberside spray and, and that'll cool them off just a little bit for a few minutes before you still be able to do your work. Like I said, I'll come back in with my calibers or even maybe even a smaller comb and work that line out with my model pin. But for right now, I want to get majority of these shady spots and dark spots that I can right now on the head, right? And uh, like I said, there's still a lot of things I'm learning. I'm still a student. It's not going to be perfect. There's no cut that I'm going to give in the studio that's going to be perfect. But once again, this is a learning studio, right? This is a place to continue our education. You know, um, we don't charge whatsoever because we're not a business location we're not an official barber shop but if people want a tip it is very much appreciative especially if they really like their haircut but if nothing else if they give us a good review on uh, facebook about how well we've done and everything that also means a lot so that'd be kind of like i said i got some one line that i have to blend out that i will be able to blend out right and uh won't be too bad We've got a little spot right here in the front, right? We'll bring it up just a little bit higher, not a whole lot higher there. We'll try to do a little bit of blending here, which I'll probably have to go with a lower uh, blade in order to blend freshly out, which I can. A little dark spot there on the side there. Bring it up to the sideburn. Just bring it in with a knife and with the tip of the edge. Then we'll spin him around. I'd rather work the chair than work myself to death by walking around constantly. So coming up and out, putting the pressure, as you can see, you got some dark spots, dark lines right here, off to the side. You see those right there, and as you look in your mirror, we know that they're there, and we know that this has got some heaviness to it too, which means there's some longer hair there that wasn't necessarily cut properly or cut right, right? So we have to go first. So Michael said, he, he said, I hate you. I said, well, he said, you intentionally done it, didn't you? I said, well, not intentionally, just accidentally on purpose. It makes for a good video afterwards of how i got to come back and fix it and do everything. Um, but did I do it absolutely intentionally? No. Um, so, we're going to come in and come high. Flick it out. Let it roll off the round part of the head, right? Round part of the head. Check on my mirrors. And the lighting is uh, an amazing help as well. But a lot of barbers, put your head down for me, a lot of barbers, they tend, and there's nothing wrong with it, they walk around their chair all day. And that's fine, and you'll see me walk around the chair some too. But the um, chair's got a swivel for a reason. And uh, so I'm trying to use that as much as possible. Notice, keep my hand, my comb, my one hand, clipper the other. Now you can keep it the other and different things like that. But keep it in this one. Keep this one in this hand. Right. We come up. And if I need to comb, work it through. I can. Right. And like I said, we're gonna get us take our shears, blend that in a little bit. That's for work that line out. That line's actually kind of working itself out already. And you see the crown is getting a nice uh, lay down point, right? Hair always has got to come back to the lowest point, okay? So, I got a little dark spot 
steel over here off of this side. A little bit hanging off that side. We might have to use some trimmers to get to that. But all in all, not too shabby. That balloon. I use my trimmers to get a little bit more as far as around the edging, bringing it down. Bend it up and out. I like to put my finger between the clippers and his ear. That way he has not to take a chance to uh, actually do any kind of damage. You see that line starting to that line's starting to blend in and out and gone by itself without us necessarily having to spend a whole lot more time on it, right? The main thing is, if you make a mistake as a barber, don't be afraid to own up to your mistakes. Okay, don't be afraid to own up to <clears throat> I didn't necessarily get it right. I can just give you a discount on a haircut, even give you the haircut if that's what needs to happen to keep a customer or willing to at least try to fix that cut. Give me just one second. At least trying to fix that one cut, right? So Sorry, I have everything set up and out already. So for trimmers, we'll be using the Babeless trimmers. They're a pretty decent trimmer. And uh, we've got Ninja Swordsman for our shears, which came in our actual school barber kit, right? So another important thing is, is on how and holding and doing the shears. If you hold the comb straight and you do your cut, you're going you're going to uh, put a line in it there as well, right? So, um, you want to make sure you're coming up. Now, if I have to, I can use thinning shears to take it out. I'm trying not to get that bushy. So the line is almost out, not completely. So I'll probably break out my um, my calibers. Go back to my regular comb. And now this is where you gotta be real careful. Now, this is a triple lot. Okay, it's the same as if I didn't had a triple lot blade on that, and it works itself all the way down to a one, right? So, which I just learned that by the way. So anyhow, coming in. This position, we'll comb it down, and we'll try to get a little bit of this length off without taking a whole lot to making a line. And coming up, trying to work this line. And get out that, as much as that line as possible. Now, the important part is holding the comb up at an angle versus straight and moving the comb with the clipper for clipper over comb, right? Clipper over comb. Still a little bit of a line, not as bad as it was, but as you can see, we still got some heaviness right here on front. I'm a little bit more comfortable with my calibers. I always start in the open position, work yourself close. You okay? You still have video? Mm -hmm. And then come in and up to the top head. I want to take a little bit more of that weight off this side. I know a lot of people 
Um, especially where I was before, there was like a um, certain way to hold the clipper and different things like that. And uh, I tend to kind of hold, there's a thumb thing here and I tend to hold it there and then come up and out, right? Up and out, calm it down. So I just want to take a little bit of that weight. And, and if I want a little bit more of that weight, I just come here and just a little bit, just with the edge, right? Or I could pop this back off. This is sitting in one as one and a half, which is going to put me about the same. I'm going to bring it out just a little bit. Take a little bit more of that weight off. See, and naturally, I'll have him move the camera for a second to see the mirror. Naturally, he has more weight on both sides on the front than he does anywhere, right? See, same thing, other side, right? So, at this point, I'm still trying to bring a little bit more of that weight off. Go back to my Model 10. This is not an actual haircut haircut. This is trying to fix the haircut, right? Trying to fix. Up and out. The round of the head. See, now it's starting to lay. Kind of like he has a delay right there. And off to the front. Not as heavy. Spinning around. Same thing this side. This side of his head, it stays heavier. He's got a cow. What's funny, he's got a crown here, a cowlick here, and a cowlick here. Right? On both sides. Kind of like devil horns. Huh. Imagine that, Martin. Um, <laughs> anyway. So the haircut's already looking 110% better. We'll come in. And I want to work coming around just a little bit, just doing a little trim up from where I cut earlier. Notice I didn't get a line too, too straight there. So I'm having tilt. I'm gonna try to get it a little bit straighter if I can. Don't have to take it too far back, All right? Other side. Is what you do to one side. You have to do it to the other. So now I'm going to take and wet it down real quick. It's already looking tons better. You come up just off of the bottom, right? Now, a lot of people hold this way. Sometimes I have to turn. I know this is going against every barber rule out there. Right now. See how here and here is the same length. This all comes back to this point. Okay. That's kind of just the way his hair lays. Ben, I already messed with the top the other day. I'm not going to mess with the top here a whole heck of a lot. Right? That's not going to do it.
your brush just off around the neck a little bit. Like I said, we're already done this cut the other day. Not a little whole lot of edge work and everything that needs to be done. Across the front. All right. Now he usually takes and combs his to one side. Sometimes it works out for me, sometimes it don't. Okay. See where he's got a little bit more on that side on the front than I like, especially right there. So we're gonna trim that up. Bring that weight off, pull the other up. Has not to get into the other, but the underneath of it there a little bit. Bring the side, shear over comb, I mean uh, clipper over comb. that way off real nice right So now if I can kind of get his hair to lay the way I want it to, it's a lot better than what it was. It looks more like a good haircut that he likes to wear. It's still got one little heavy spot there. We can go back in the top and give it texture if we would like, or just we'll flick it like that with our comb. Bring it back, and you can see right there where he still has this here to the back where it crowns at. Now you can take that crown completely out. We might go ahead and take it up just a little bit. Try to work it around. I just don't want to chunk it, right? You gotta be very careful. Because then it's a high and tight haircut. Then, you know, that's all you can do, right? Or I know how to do anyway. So, bring it up. See, and it don't porcupine there as much, right? So, come back over, give him that look that he likes as far as that. And see, you still got it a little bit right there. See how it still continues to kind of stick up. At some point, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do. Um, with a crown. They know they have it, they know it's there, they know the effects. Now you can do some flipping and folding and do different things, but the main thing is there's not a killer ton of things that can be done with it.
And there probably is a lot more that can be done with it. I just don't know what I could do with it, right? Being a barber student, so. Over my cat. It's got a little bit more weight to this side than I would personally like, but that's okay. As a good buddy one of mine once told me, Jim, know when to let it go. Alright, know when to quit. All right, so there, it's a lot better than it was. We got a lot of the dark spots out. We took the crown back down. We brought the sides back up. It's got a nice kind of look, other than he's got some heaviness over here on this side, right? And has, it goes and work that heaviness down over a little bit over time, right? And a lot of this is because when I was early learning time and early learning things, I was using a lot of thinning shears, stuff like that. So it calls it to be kind of puffy, so you just kind of work it out, right? You spin them around. And uh, we're going to give him back his glasses. Now, this is where he's going to get real mad because he knows what his hair looked like before. So now he's going to see what his hair looked like now, right? And then uh, we'll see what he thinks, if he thinks it's better or not. Do you like that or not? I'm tired. He said, I'm tired, all right? <laughs> so, okay. So there you have it, guys. Lay him down out the chair, brush him off. Give me a second and get ready 